Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta, day 12 of this 30 day challenge. I'm here with one of my besties, Stephanie. And the funny thing is, you guys, Stephanie is in Atlanta right now, but she's going through her hell, hell of fire, her ring of fire, her dance her Nataraja dance of fire in her own life. And it's been so hard for me because I'm trying to like back away and let her like have alone time and, and have her own space to be in her misery. <laughs> that sounds so cruel, doesn't it? But, uh, but you know, it's, it's part of the journey, isn't it, Stephanie, to have that alone time where you're, you're up against your own demons. Well, I think I'm past the, uh, initial hump of hell <laughs> the hump of hell <laughs> i just made that up that's really cute <laughs> i did one tour of the neighborhood <laughs> um i i it's it's been it's been a it's been a trip um I, well, i've been here for almost 3 weeks now i've only seen you maybe 3 times um Not granted you time. weren't here you weren't here the first week i was here but still um we haven't we went hiking one day and that was an amazing day. Um, we haven't really, we talk every day, but we, you've been, yeah, you've been letting me do my thing. And I think I, I've seen Todd <laughs> a lot more than you um, yeah. because he's, you know, he's uh, teaching me in Mysore and I had my second leg class this morning. So that went pretty well. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a shit storm, but it's starting to the light is starting to be visible at the end of the tunnel yeah and i just want to say thank you to everyone in the challenge who has booked readings with me because that has been literally um my saving grace on this trip and um help supporting my business and everything like that so i just want to shout out to everybody who has booked with me i've had about 23 people book with me, which is, I've never gotten that many bookings in a matter of five days. So um, that's amazing. And I've met with some amazing people too. Like the people who are coming to me for readings, they're amazing. They're yeah. really taking the challenge. They're not, they're not so rigid about the challenge that they can't have a good sense of humor about it, but they're really taking it seriously. They're really shifting their vibration. They're really putting in the effort, the work. So um, it's been good to to do readings and um on these on anybody who is really putting in that effort because vibrationally speaking i actually read the best on people who are really putting in the effort i know that sounds kind of strange but um it's a vibrational match you know what i mean so um sorry i was getting a text message i'm on my phone because i don't get good internet in this hotel but anyways yeah it's I've been able to, to do amazing readings and um, special thanks to those people. And I'm looking forward to the ones I have in the upcoming future. And yeah, guys, Stephanie's offering a 25% off. If you're doing the challenge, the 30 day challenge, you have to be in the signal group. And I will again, put that link down in the description box below. My nose is running like crazy again. I know a lot of people in the challenge group are talking about having their sinuses come up. It is a form of detoxing. Um, and yeah, this is a special kind of hell. And I said yesterday in the, in, the, in the video, a lot of the philosophy that I'm using in the shadow work challenge comes directly from the Yoga Sutras, um, a philosophy that I'm very well versed in. This is what I do for a living outside of YouTube and what I myself have been a student of for 16 years. And so I took the theory and I meshed it in with a more modern twist where I added things like bar, kickboxing, all that kind of stuff. And what I said yesterday one of the main goals of the practice of yoga, which is why the controllers try to bash yoga and make it seem corrupt, is because yoga gives you the abil ability to see the truth through the illusion. And so at first, that is seeing your own truth through your own illusion, through the illusion you've created with your ego mind, right? Um, whether that's false fears, whether that's bad or good, doesn't matter. The truth is your soul is what's true. But on a very macro level, when you're doing your own shadow work, when you're working on yourself and you're challenging yourself, you, you stop being prey to manipulative people because you start to see the truth through their illusion as well. And so that is why I believe um, 
I mean, my channel is so unbelievably shadow banned right now. Um, with 47,000 subscribers, I only I get less than a thousand views, which is not mathematically possible. So they are really restricting my videos. And it's because when people start to take their power back, where are they taking their power back from? From the controllers. And so what you or each of you are doing who are either in the challenge or doing your own form of shadow work is you are literally the secret weapon. You are literally doing the most dangerous thing you could do in this war. And that's take your power back. And you can't take your power back simply by saying, I take my power back. No, because you have to understand your own illusions, your own attachments. And I knew, I knew because a lot of us, one of Stephanie's fears, which I think you don't mind me talking about because we've talked about it before, which is one of my fears, which I think is a lot of people's fears, is security with money. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that her coming down here, that the universe was going to put her in a position where she was going to have to rely on faith over fear to break that attachment to the security, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, Stephanie? Am I making sense? Yep. Yep. I mean, I've between June and now I've literally been sitting, staring at fear across the table and money being a root chakra issue. Um, you know, my father passed away when I was four and a half, there's your security gone, ripped away. And that's also a form of abandonment. Yeah. Um, and, and, and meanwhile, you know, my aunt and uncle raised me. I grew up in a house where we didn't want for anything because my, they had good jobs. They had really good jobs. We weren't filthy rich or anything, but we're probably a step under probably how you grew up, Bryce. And as a single mom with no support in my early adult life, and literally, I hardly had support as a single mom. I was kind of thrown out to the wolves. But that was kind of gearing up to now. Because I really had to put faith in God then. Um, and I went from living a, a, a life where I, you know, we had food on the table. Money wasn't an issue. To being thrown in a life where I was literally living off of very bare minimum, having to go to the food pantry, that sort of life, okay? Well, once I established a full-time job as a medical assistant, I got back on my feet, and I have dreaded the thought of even going back to that previous life of poverty. And this has kind of brought that wound up. A big time brought that wound up. So I've had to really sit and face that fear dead on. And just like back then, I remember always asking God, please keep a roof over my head. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But the funny part is God never allowed me to go without. Yeah. Even the two weeks I was homeless as a single mom back when I was 22 years old. Um, I never went without. I still had a roof over my head. And so it is really a test of faith. Um, I've had a roof over my head this whole entire time. I came here with bare minimum. Um, and I, you know, it's completely by the grace of God that I'm still going forward. I have my last attunement tomorrow. Um, and then I'm going to continue to work with Todd um, with yoga. And he's going to teach me how to do the Vedic chanting and Probably I'm sure I'll work with Cindy more too with certain things and keep doing readings. And, you know, the goal is to be here until Thanksgiving and hang out with my bestie for Thanksgiving <laughs> and get more training and all that kind of stuff. Because, yes, my teachers are down here in Atlanta. I don't really have much for teaching up in Connecticut. Not much in Connecticut. <laughs> and then the goal is to eventually get my ass down here permanently so and that's I'm why going... and, I, and i wanted to talk about that too stephanie because i want you guys to understand that when you say i want to heal myself the universe is going to pull up your worst fears and hand it to you on a silver platter mm -hmm. oh yeah big time and if i and i have to say like if i had not been down this road myself so many times before oh i would be at your hotel every day hanging out gossiping with you but I knew 
I knew when she came down here that she was going to be going through the Reiki and the intense yoga that as her friend and as someone who's been down this road for a lot longer, my responsibility was to allow, not, not be selfish myself, but give her space to have her own breakdown, her own come to Jesus moment. I hate using the word Jesus, but I like that saying, the come to Jesus moment. You know, that, that moment of- Come to Mithra moment. <laughs> come to Mithra moment. <laughs> <laughs> her own little um um you know dark night of the soul because one thing that we tend to do too and even when we're aware when we're aware that this is what we're embarking on we're still gonna look for distractions we're still gonna look for that and and it's that i was telling you that the verse of one of the verses of the sutras that emmy's been really focused on that i said to you is like you know that the patanjali realized the mind will always go towards pleasure and away from pain, yes. even if going towards that pleasure is going to eventually lead to more pain. And so once we're aware that that's what the mind is trying to do, that's what the ego is trying to do, we can then start to understand what the mind is doing and then course correct the mind, even though the mind is still saying, fuck, 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 fuck. You know, we can still kind of course correct it. And so, and, and Stephanie's had to do that a couple of times and it's very, very hard. It's like trying to move a boulder sometimes. You know, yeah. and um, and that's why I was saying in that last video that one of the hardest jobs about being an Ashtanga teacher is having a tough love because that per that human in me wants to sit down on the mat and cry with you. You know, but the, the no, the you have to go through it yourself, though. You have to. I mean, yeah, it's okay to have that little bit of support, but if if you don't go through it yourself and and sit in it yourself, you're not going to get past it if you're coddled. Yeah, it's it's not that it's a it's a it's not a mean tough love and i and i already knew that i i haven't have i biked oh please no, don't no, hang no, out no. with me yeah, no, i know you know it i know you knew it i knew because you that's the thing about <laughs> stephanie and I, I have to give you a lot of credit stephanie i really do because the amount that you have worked on yourself in one year in one year is unbelievable if you guys remember where she was this time last year and all the valleys and mountains that she's had to climb through and the amount of programming that she has released um, you have come leaps and bounds. And I said that to you, it's obviously you've done this in a past life because it takes most people a lot longer than that to really tra to transform, you know, sh to shit or get off the pot, as they say. And, um, and even in your weakest moments where you're angry and upset, you still push forward. And that's what I, I tell people, like, even if you have to crawl, you keep moving forward. Um, because yeah. there is it's a one day at a time thing. Yeah, there is going to be a breakthrough. It's a one breath at a time thing. It's it's there is eventually when the, when the, when you're at the darkest night of the soul, that's usually right before the breakthrough happens. And what people tend to do is that they get to that really sticky point and they back out and they leave. So they don't even get to experience what that breakthrough was going to be because they shift and run away. And that's why the video yesterday I, or the day before yesterday, I told people like, you know, because a lot of people are being very triggered by the all meditation, which was a very a surprise to me that so many people were having such mm -hmm. a visceral reaction. But that makes sense because vibration is healing. And so it's obviously the vibration of the all is pulling things up that need to be examined. And instead of when you have the options now between doing either sound bowl healing or alm, I'm, a, I'm challenging you guys to pick the one that triggers you the most. Yeah. Instead of running, what would happen if you stayed? Just yeah. And let's talk about the, uh, the, the trigger, the, the trigger. I, I try to read as much of the comments as I can in the signal group, which is amazing, by the way. Um, one of the things I'm noticing is people are like, well, I'm ADD, I'm ADHD, I can't focus. I'm here to tell you, I'm, I'm one of the worst cases of ADHD there is. I mean, it's like squirrel, because um, there is certain, if you're looking at Western medicine, there are different criterias for different type of ADHD. I would be classified as severe. I always have. And it, ADHD is a central nervous system problem. So you're dealing with three chemicals in the brain, norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. They each have, each of those chemicals in the brain have a particular um, job that they do. Like serotonin helps you sleep and relax. Dopamine is what triggers when you do drugs or something that like eating. Okay. So, pleasure. Okay. But uh, we talked about this, Bryce, off camera yesterday. And the thing about um, sitting in the chanting is 
it's not going to be easy. It's not easy for me. Um, and if you feel like you can't do the one point focus, like you said, Bryce, to me yesterday is a practice. You're not going to get it right away. I have a very hard time meditating. I always have. I do feel that the OM chant is the best way I can do that because I'm more focused on the vibration. So just allow the vibration to do its work and heal. Um, so I, I wanted to bring that up really quickly because I, that's something that keeps coming up is I can't focus. I can't focus. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> it's the practice that one point focus because you're not going to get it right away. Yes. I, and if yeah. I can do it, anybody can because I'm... <laughs> Yeah, there are people who have been med meditating for 20 years now will, that will tell you it's still just as much as a challenge today as it was on day one. But it's just a practice. And through that practice, you start to understand the power of your mind. You know, we're just trying. And when, when the agitation comes up, when the thoughts come up, you just acknowledge them. Interesting. That came up. And then you let it go. And then you go back. And it's going to be this tug of war throughout the whole process. You know, meditation is not daydream. It's not visualization. It's not daydream. It's not creating a, a, a manifestation of your mind. No, that's leading more into delusion and derangement. We want to rein the mind in. We want to rein it in. And that's why it's a practice. And that's why you're only supposed to do it for 15 minutes at, at the max. Because, and then you just go about your life. Because it's just yeah. a practice. That's all it ever will be. Like, if you are in a human body, that's all it's ever going to be. And it's not supposed to be easy. You know, stop following people that tell you it's rainbows and unicorns because they've obviously not done the work themselves to tell you that it's rainbow. Stop following people who don't want to talk about the hard stuff because that's what shadow work is. It's the shadow side yeah. because that's just ignoring it. That's just trying to escape it. And that's not what spirituality is. I've said it. I've said it once and I'll say it again, even though we are going to pull tarot cards and stuff like that. We are so, we so misunderstand what spirituality is in the West. We think spirituality is being a psychic medium and talking to spirits and divining. That's no. not what spirituality is, guys. No. Talking Anybody to can get a pack of tarot cards and well, read we basic. <laughs> we all have the clairvoyant abilities if we tap into yeah. it. That's how we are. That's We're antennas as humans. But talking to a dead person, a spirit, is the same as talking to Stephanie right now. It's just communicating with another sentient being, right? spirituality our practice of spirituality is coming into your own spirit your own not someone else's not a distraction but being with your own spirit and it's see about the soul evolving and and get, getting and just continuing to climb the ladder in in terms of your spiritual evolution as as a spiritual being yep and the body is the shakti of the soul so the body can't the soul can live without the body but the body cannot live without the soul so your soul created your body with all of its aches and pains and warts and beauty and whatever you have so the soul could know itself so the soul could practice knowing itself so any type of of the obstacle or puzzle that is presented to you whether in your thought process whether in your body is something your soul created so that you would know yourself so they're be that's why I call them the wounds are sacred. They're beautiful. They're sacred because that your your soul created that for a purpose. There's a a reason behind it. There's a there's a there's a reason to the madness, right? There's a reason to this. And I also want to clarify too. But I had I saw a couple people asking about the dosha system. If your doses change, no, your doshas do not change. So before we, I know. So so I will having kappa. <laughs> For the rest of my <laughs> life, as Bryce in this avatar, I will always be Vata Pitta. Now, what shifts and changes the doshas is the time of life that you're living in. So right now, Stephanie and I and a lot of our viewers are in the Pitta time of life. So Pitta time of life is puberty to menopause for women. I don't know what that is for men, but around that the same age, I would think, when you start to transfer into your so senior status. Um, right now, you're in Pitta time. When you're a kid, you're in Kappa time. So when I was a kid, the kapha energy was that time of life for me, even though I was a vata pitta. Now that I'm in pitta time, funnily enough, my vata is getting more, more aggravated than my pitta. But when I go into vata time after menopause, which hopefully maybe that'll shift with the timeline shift, I will have to really be careful about my vata getting out of whack, right? Because I'm already in vata time. So if you lead with pitta 
and you're in the pit of time of life right now, you really have to be careful about eating the spicy foods. You know, that's why um, exercises like cardiovascular exercises for kappas, or sorry, for pittas are not the best because the cardio is giving the fire and pitta already has fire. So if you have a pitta imbalance, you're not going to be doing a lot of hardcore cardio. You're going to be doing more anaerobic. Now, for someone like Stephanie, who is heavily kappa imbalanced, the cardio becomes essential to ignite the kappa. But with Ashtanga, there is cardio in the Ashtanga system, isn't there? So it's using... Oh, yeah aerobic so um yeah. so i wanted to bear i wanted to clarify that like you are not going to magically just wake up one day and be kappa if you're not kappa that's like saying you're magically going to be a go to bed a white girl and wake up a black girl it's not going to happen in this life next life maybe we'll see what you pick but not in this life so just honor what it is your body your soul decided i need these these elements to work on so i can know myself so honor that as okay like stephanie struggles with the kappa and the pitta imbalance actually because of the over overheating sometimes so that's that tug of war friction that she's she opted before she took her avatar to work on in this life so don't see it as something that's so terrible you know see well, i want to touch on that for a second too so when we say imbalance with them um, i'll just make an example so I'm tri-dosha, but again, it's the kappa and the pitta that are more the imbalance than the vata. Um, what I've noticed specifically in the last three days. Now, when I was home, I would do ashtanga for about four to five days a week, depending on, because I my ego would kick in and be like, oh, I, do I have to do this, right? Well, when you're working with a teacher, it, it's kind of a, uh, it's more of a motivation to get up, go to go to um, Mysore and everything. So I've been literally going about six days a week at this point. Um, so eating, I have to eat a lot of salads, a lot of uh, raw fruits and vegetables. And I've been doing pretty good with that for the most part. And I had to cut out my favorite, which is potatoes. That's like my favorite. That is such a cup of food. It's unreal. And what I've started to notice is that so kappas tend to get, and this isn't intentional, but they get lazy. And what I mean is lack of motivation, procrastination. That has been one of, I'm not like sitting here with a, a, a house that is disgusting. I'm not a slob. Not, not, you've been to my house, Bryce. I mean, Please, it's yeah. not like that. It's like literally I wait till the last minute to do shit. Um, if you tried to email me, you'll notice I don't get to my emails until a couple weeks later sometimes because I lack the motivation. Um, and it's just part of my disposition and that's part of the friction I have to deal with it in this lifetime. Whereas you, Bryce, you're like on top of it, but, but almost overly, overly over the top of getting things done because of your vata. Yeah. So it's, it's just essentially the disposition. And what I've noticed is in the last three days specifically, I am getting shit done. I, I'm like on top of it all. I'm getting people booked. I'm like making sure everything is nice and tidy. I have no, I have no chaos I'm dealing with right now in terms of like what the hotel room <laughs> looks like. I mean, if I was home, I'd be cleaning all the time. Like it's, I'm very motivated. I'm not procrastinating on anything. So that's something I've noticed heavily in the last few days. Did so that's just an example. Problem. Yes. So I'm that, and I wanted to bring that up as an example. Because I know a ton of people deal with the kappa trait. I know, and I, I know that's a struggle. It's been actually a huge, it's more of an insecurity to me than my own weight. Because I would be like, even like in um, school, I'd have a hard time getting my homework done, have a hard time focusing, concentrating, procrastinating. And I would say, what is wrong with me? Why can't I get this done? I don't understand. Why do I wait till the last minute? And it's not like I did, I don't want to be like that. But it was a major insecurity of mine. Well, now I realize it's just an imbalance of and, my and disposition. What was happening for you as a child, because you grew up in a predominantly Italian fa family, so your parents were feeding you food that was leaning into the imbalance. So you were eating a lot of cup of foods that was mm -hmm. not good for you. So it was it was keeping you imbalanced. <laughs> keeping you where you felt that sluggish energy and it's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so with the kappa, so when a kappa is balanced, they will, kappas do have the tendency because kappa is water and, and earth. So kappas have the tendency to be kind of heavy, 
very like uh, coppas have the tendency uh, to gain weight. That's one of the uh, imbalances is they struggle with their weight. They tend to be very lazy at times. Uh, but coppas are typically some of the most compassionate people you will ever meet. They're the people that will sit on the sofa and snuggle up with you and write love letters to all their friends. That's the cop, you know, that they're very compassionate and they're, they're kind of slower. They can be slower people. Um, but when the cop is balanced, they can get their weight under control. They find the motivation. So they have the good qualities, keeping the bad qualities or the imbalanced qualities at bay. But what knowledge is power. So that's why I think the dosha, I heard somebody, so or somebody put on the comment section, doshas have been the biggest aha moment for me. And that's how it was for me as well. When I started me really thinking in the doshas, I mean, people talk about the blood type diet and I've covered that on my channel. Blood type diet for me means nothing. The dosha diet is what really, because that's the just, because as an O negative for my blood type, there could be another O negative who's Pitakapa or Kapa Vata. Yeah. It's and, all individualized. It's yes. And when I found yeah. out, when I realized that I was very imbalanced in my vata, it explained why I have now with that, with that being said, you can be a pit and a kappa and experience anxiety as well. Like, I'm not saying that this doesn't exist for those, but for vatas, when they get hit with anxiety, it becomes an anxiety disorder. And what, what was happening to me is I was eating because I create, and that's why I hate this whole intuitive eating phenomenon. Because we are so out of touch with our intuition that we don't understand we don't understand it. And so people will crave something and they think that's their intuition saying that's what I need to eat. But nine times out of ten, it's not. It's because that element with them is imbalanced and like attracts like. So when I am at the height of my panic attacks and anxiety disorder, I'm craving vata foods. I'm craving salads. I'm craving juices. I'm craving apples. I'm craving grapes. That's the last thing I should be eating. When my, now that I know, now that I have that knowledge, when I feel my anxiety start to get out of hand, I go and I eat a very well-cooked potato, which is what Stephanie can't have, but I can't because I need more kappa. I need more of that. To that, uh, uh, that and energy. I crave potatoes when I'm feeling out of whack. Yeah. Because potatoes is my favorite, favorite food. The it doesn't matter what kind of potato. It doesn't matter if it's baked, scalloped potatoes. French fries, potato chips, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Potatoes with sour cream. <laughs> so, that, so, so let's look at that. So if I am Vata Pitta with very little kappa, I mean, my, my, the kappa in me is so little, they don't even count it. Like my hair is kappa. That's like it. You know, I've, I have one of the elements of kappa is that you maintain friendships for very long times. I do that. I have friends still from high school. You know, like that is one of the elements too that I have. But it's so little in me that they don't even put it on the scale. So what do I have to do? I have to find kappa foods to put into my system to give me the kappa element. Right? And of course, those foods get digested and move out of the system. So I constantly am watching that. So for someone who is super kappa, they need to then bring in more vata. So they have to go find the vata foods to bring them into the vata element. And of course, it digests. They have to, it's, it's, a, it's not a to eat one salad and you're, you're done. You know, it's a constant. And it's not saying that these foods, like it's not saying that Stephanie's never going to be able to eat a potato again for the rest of her life. No, that's not what it's saying at all. But now that she knows if she's for Thanksgiving where there's going to be a lot of cup of foods, she's going to be able to make the, the choices leading up to Thanksgiving to really clear the cup out of her system. I was just so that, thinking that. <laughs> so that when she comes to Thanksgiving, she can enjoy the cup of foods. Right? Like if I know I love I love candied apples, right? The caramel apples or whatever. If I'm gonna go to a county fair and get a caramel apple, because I am going to get one at that county fair, I then have to for a few days bring more cup of foods into my, my system so that apple is not gonna totally derail derail me. Right? And when we start to understand how this works within ourselves we then are able to protect ourselves. And so, and it also, you know, so Stephanie, you can look back at your younger self and go, oh, okay, young Stephanie, there was nothing wrong with you. You were just imbalanced in your kappa. Yep. That's all that was going on. And I know we've talked And I was fed pasta. I was, we were meat eaters too. So that's a no-no on the dosha, which I know you've been making that an extra challenge in the, 
30 day challenge to go without meat, um, potatoes, um, just all the heavy, heavy foods is what I grew up with because yes, you know, we were, you know, predominantly, uh, Italian food eaters in the family because I had <laughs> Italian both sides or Sicilian, I should say, God forbid I say Italian when you're Sicilian, there's a difference. Trust me. Um, so that's what I grew up with. And, you know, I always wondered why does my stomach hurt all the time? Why do I feel bloated all the time? Uh, when I used to eat, I remember like I'd go to eat lunch at school and I couldn't focus for the last couple classes after lunch because I nearly would fall asleep. I didn't get, I didn't get energized. I was exhausted. I actually fell asleep a few times in school. <laughs> so, you know, that goes to show you that food is energy and it depends on what kind of energy you're putting in your body. Can your body digest it or not? Can your body process it and break it down or not? You know, we talked about my hair loss. Well, ever since I've been eating more Vata foods, my hair is growing back. It's no longer falling out. Um, I still have thin hair. I have lots of hair. I have opposite of what you have, Bryce. So I have very, what is that? It's, it's the thin, coarse, dry hair and curly. Um, so, you know, my hair is always an issue. And obviously there was a blockage in the energy that helps my hair grow. Because I, I mean, back in my cop up time period in my life when I was a little girl I had hair down to my ass and it was thick it was it was gorgeous hair and then in my early teenage years it just went to shit <laughs> so well let's talk about, I won't say your mom or your sister's name but your mom and sister are both like me vata pitta or pitta vata so they were not having the same reactions to the foods that you were having they were no. feeling fine from it and so for you you did feel like the odd <laughs> because you were having a different response but you had no idea that it was actually coming from the food for the most yeah. part yeah you know? i mean and, and like i'll just say they're not that my biological mom is my biological aunt and my biological cousin and yes they're very vata pizza if i'm looking at them and i have high anxiety and they they're more longer and lanky and um i was physically emotionally mentally spiritually the kind of the oddball because my body shape is very i would say it's it's a mix of kappa pizza i mean i'm not totally a kappa shape but because i get very like pizzas tend to have more muscle tone i i when i do have the muscle which i am forming now i do tend to get really really toned up and everything but their their body shape would be more like yours longer lanky you know what you say gorilla arms <laughs> Yeah, gorilla arms. <laughs> the, long, class, the long, I, long arms. I'll tell that. So, so I said it on Sunday in my class. Stephanie was there. Um, I had a teacher tell me once, like that, uh, a certain transition should be easy for me because I have gorilla arms. And I sat there in the class, and I was like, "I have gorilla," and I had such a complex about how long my limbs are. And see, I would love for my limbs to be a little bit longer so I can, uh, you know wrap around and, and actually bind my, my arms instead I got little T-Rex arms, you know. <laughs> the binding, I will say for people who have long limbs, like behind the head and the binding is was easier for me because I have long limbs. But the binding and the leg behind the head is accessible for people with shorter limbs. They just have to work harder for it because that's what they're oh, that's what their soul said. Hey, let's challenge this. And I know you have stuff in your shoulders you're working through anyway. So it's all divine timing. It's all di divine. Yeah. How, so don't see, I guess the point is the things that are hard, the obstacles, the frustration, that's why I say that's where the juice is. I don't mm -hmm. care about the stuff that's easy for you. That's boring. The stuff that's easy for you is boring. I want to know where you're struggling because that's where it's interesting. That's and it is possible to bind though, because oh yeah, as long as Todd can get me to bind now, he's got to help me and assist me. But I can do it now. You, you, Wakino well, McGregor, who is a very famous Ashanga teacher. She, I, she's very small. She's very short, um, and she has very short arms. And she talks about this, and she's one of the certified teachers, meaning that she's one of the seventeen women in the world who are certified. That means that she's ex gone all the way through. Like she's in like she's got a YouTube channel. Yeah. 
she and she can bind and do all the crazy stuff and she says she's like when people come up and say my arms are too short she's like oh please have you seen mine and i can do it you just have to work it just it. It, it, it it takes a little while and it you got to be patient with yourself don't go into ashtanga thinking you're going to do everything in a day because that's impossible no I because mean, the whole point is working through the shit yeah there are six series in the ashtanga system so that every person finds a struggle somewhere yeah Right. Uh, my struggles are definitely in primary series. I mean, absolutely without a doubt, but um, little by little, I'm able to go further. I mean, now I'm doing back bends to, to a certain degree. Do I like it? Nope. Hate it. Freaking hate it. <laughs> and by then, I'm like completely out of steam and strength. So I'm like, please don't fall on my head. So that's, another, that's another thing about the Ashtanga system is that it does exhaust you. It's supposed it to. It does. And so yeah. by the time you get to the end and you're having it after you, then you start doing drop back stand up. Then you have to do TikToks, which are like kind of like a forward and back handspring. So then it asks, it's going to ask you for more. Give me more. Give me more. And so you have to yeah. then dig deeper to find that energy and that stability and that focus. And so there's, there's a, there's a method here. This is what this is. And I'm going to go ahead and share before we get into the tarot cards. So today is Saturday. The day that we're airing this is on Saturday, day 12. And so today is actually your rest day. Once again, I did pick Saturday. Saturday is the rest day because in traditional yoga, that's our rest day. Um, Saturday is called Saturday for the planet Saturn, which uh, I know a lot of the controllers have used Saturn for negative purposes, but we're taking it back because Saturn was created by God, just as we were. And so the template of Saturn is basically it's father time, it's karma, it's uh, action and reaction, it's the matrix. And so Saturday becomes a day of reflection. That's why it's a rest day is because we reflect on our work. Because what is karma? It's just your work. So it's a day of reflecting on the time given on this earth where you get to work through these things. And so I do want you guys to sleep a little extra if you can on Saturdays because I know a lot of people are feeling very tired. And that's normal because your body's totally re restructing itself. So today you're going to be studying the chakra system. So what are the seven chakras? What are their Sanskrit names? Because Sanskrit is important and their colors. What is each chakra responsible for? Take notes on where you think you might have issues. I do have you doing a 60-minute chakra meditation. And as I said yesterday, usually meditation is under 15 minutes, but this is different. This is kind of like a sound bowl healing. It's going to hit different uh, sounds to, to penetrate different chakras. And so I want you to lie down and really listen to this and absorb it, especially if you're new to the chakra system and see if you can actually, especially after you've done the all meditation and you're used to vibration now, see if you can actually feel uh, where these different sounds are hitting in your chakra system. And then I have for more information on chakras, please purchase the book Eastern Body, Western Mind or follow along with Stephanie on her channel as she reads through the book. And I have the link here to the first First episode she did on Eastern Body, Western Mind. And so you can listen to her read it. I will also put a link to the book down if you want to get the book for yourself. All right. Uh, you've got some journaling to do because you had a big challenge this week, uh, which we spoke about yesterday. So if you missed that, you can go back and listen to that video from day 11. Now, Sunday, fun day. Get up, make your bed up. Your last meal should be, be between 5 and 7 p.m. No snacking after p.m. This allows your digestive system at least 12 hours of rest between dinner and breakfast. So many people, especially kappa based people, Stephanie can talk about this, have the propensity to snack at night. And so yep. what I want you to learn <laughs> is why are you snacking at night? I don't think you're hungry. What emotions? You've been outside all day in the sun, right? The sun has given you energy. So what emotions are starting to expel as the sun goes down? And what are you covering up by snacking? And, and the funny thing is, is if you actually cut your food off of it, I actually stop eating by 5 p.m. normally, unless it's a special occasion. Um, when you go that long without eating, you actually wake up in the morning with more energy. It's it's wild that your 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 body thanks you for giving it a choice to um, to rest. So you're you you get a choice now of exercise. So you can either do the dancing with the oldies um, with Richard Simmons like last week, or you can turn your own music on and dance your own freestyle for sixty minutes. Or you can go outside by yourself with your pet or with your family and walk for 60 minutes. So Sunday fun days, the exercises are a little bit different. They're more of a joyous celebratory exercise versus the hard work we're doing um, with the other days of the week. And so you get to pick either do sweating with the oldies, dance by yourself freestyle for 60 minutes, 
or go for a walk for 60 minutes. Um, for meditation, again, for Sunday, you're either picking sound bowl healing or all meditation. Again, pick the one that triggers you the most. And then you're going to you're gonna journal. So which three of the exercise modalities did you pick? Why? Did you feel overwhelmed having to pick what exercise to do? So people get overwhelmed by that. If you felt overwhelmed making your own, own exercise choice, why? Do you trust yourself? Are you used to others making choices for you? Where is your life where, where, sorry, that's where in your life have you handed your power over to someone else? What's the difference between accepting tutelage from a teacher and being bossed around or controlled by someone else? There's a huge difference there. And so if you felt anxiety over picking um, your exercise on Sunday, I want you to, to really contemplate that. What's the difference between having a teacher tell you what to do because they know what's coming and having someone control you? Because there's a huge difference between the two. This is the difference between the guru and the cult leader. Okay? All right. And then we'll get into next week, uh, tomorrow. So, all right, guys. So, with that being said, if you have any questions about uh, Saturday or Sunday's challenge, you can ask them down the or down in the comment section below. But, Stephanie, do you have your cards on you? Yes. I want to make one quick comment or suggestion to anybody who struggles with being kappa and gets hungry at nighttime. You got to wean yourself out of eating. And so what I did, and it really helped, and I don't wake up in the middle of the night hungry anymore because I was a midnight snacker, orange juice. Orange juice or apple cider, apple juice. So if you get juice and just not full glass, just a little bit. A shot glass. Take a just, shot. Just a, just a little bit. You know, I, I did two to four ounces and that would, because what I would struggle with is the feeling that my blood sugar was getting low and that intense hunger, that intense hunger feeling. So if you ingest a little bit of juice, that will, it, you're not putting solids in your stomach, but you're at least helping that to sustain that, that, that feeling of, of being full, but you're not full. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's some, this is something I've done. I don't do that anymore because I, now my stomach, I can easily now stop eating. I Between six and seven is my last meal. Just not by choice, but be, by my schedule, really. And then I don't eat until 1130 noontime the next day. That's just the way I work it. Um, let's, can I just focus on that for a second, too? Because the interesting thing is the kappa, the kappas are the ones that can actually go hours without eating and now i can i couldn't before i was eating every couple of hours feeling like i but the thing is though i was eating foods i couldn't digest so yeah. my body was lacking the nutrients it was desperately needing so yeah. then i would feel like my sugar level was low i would feel like I, that hangry feeling now that i'm eating foods that my body is able to absorb i eat maybe twice a day now I mean, I eat about 1130 noontime and then my next meal is dinner. I mean, once in a while I'll have like a little bit of a snack, but it's something that it's like an apple with peanut butter. Yeah. Um, I do a little bit of organic pop popcorn sometimes because that's, you know, corn is cerebral. That's, that's, um, it's not, my thing was potato chips. So I, it's once in a while that crunchiness I need, but other than that, um, I don't really need as much food as actually it got to the point where I almost forgot to eat at times. <laughs> well, that's that but. the kappas can go. I mean, kappas are master fasters. Like for a vata, fasting is not good for me. But for kappas, <laughs> they can fast. Like that is one. And, I, and as a vata, I'm not someone that craves. I'm not a foodie. Like I don't, I forget to eat. A vata's, it's interesting. Kappas love their food. A lot of kappas use food as like that addiction, as that, um, Oh, yeah, I'm a foodie through and through, foodie. but not anymore. Yeah, Vatas, on the other hand, will forget to eat all the time, but they're the ones that need to be eating all the time, or Kappas, who love the food, are the ones that shouldn't be eating. They, they can hold it's it. It's the opposite. Hours. It's an opposite. And so isn't that interesting, the way that the energy designed itself? Isn't that interesting? Because that's the biggest struggle between the two. So I need a little bit more Stephanie, and Stephanie needs a little bit of more of, of me. In our, you know, in the energy cycle, right? So that's, that's, and, and you're going to, and so it's interesting. It's all, I, the dosha system, for the person that said that was the aha moment, 
I think the dosha system is the aha moment for a lot of us Westerners because all, it yeah. just makes sense. It's just common sense. Once, and that's why I also wanted you guys to study it because I get so many emails of people asking me, how do I know what my dosha is? What about this test, that test? I thought, you know what? If you study this and you really get to know the dosha system very well, you won't need to take a quiz to know what you are. Yeah. I mean, even if they're journaling what you're eating, how, it, how do you feel after you eat? Are you gassy? Do you have stomach pains? Do you have diarrhea, constipation? What's your energy level? Or do you feel tired or do you feel energized? You know, if I eat a potato. Are you depressed? I feel like, I feel like hell after, like literally like hell. However, and it's just that minute period of time of pleasure where I'm eating my potato. Five but minutes. if I eat an apple, if I eat an apple, I'm energized. I don't feel bloated. I feel great, you know, versus... If you ate a potato, you would feel great. But if you ate an apple, you would be doubled over in pain. I'd be doubled over in pain. You saw me with the grapes. Yeah. Oh, I saw you with grapes. Absolutely. Yeah. That was, saw, it's my body. Goes, Oop. It can't yeah. do anything. I mean, I'm you looked like you were almost pregnant in a way because you were so bloated from it. Yeah, from grapes. So there is not a one size fits all. And that's why I keep, that's the biggest. The Western world has put, these foods are healthy. These foods are not. That is bullshit. That is absolute bullshit. If I'm at a gas station and I have, that's the only option I have to buy food for me. And I've got the gas station grapes or a bag of Skittles with all the chemicals those Skittles have in them. Those Skittles are better for me than those grapes are. An opposite for me. If I eat Skittles, I'd feel like shit. But if I eat the grapes, I'd be fine. And Vatas um, can handle sugar. Vatas are, you know, people, there's always people, oh, sugar's of the devil. It's more addictive than cocaine, blah, 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 blah. For some people, yes. For vatas, vatas can hand. I can handle sugar. I can eat a piece of cake and go to bed and not be stiff in the morning. But a kappa or a pitta does that. They're going to be stiff in the morning. It's all mm -hmm. about energy, balancing your energy. Okay, and so so there is no such thing as healthy food and unhealthy food. No such thing. It's just energy food. It's just what what works for you and what doesn't. If your child. If you make your child food and they say they tell you they're crying, they don't want to eat it, it hurts their stomach, don't force them to eat it. It's probably going against their dosha. They're not being brats. They're feeling that the food doesn't work with them, okay? Um, and that's one thing. Yes, gas is a big thing. You should not be gassy. No one should be gassy. If you are having gas problems, it's not IBS. I think IBS is a made-up thing. You're oh, right. yeah. If you have gas, you're not eating foods that your body, it's your, your body's talking to you. Your body's trying to shake you and be like, I can't eat this. And all you do is just go buy gas X. No, what you're eating is causing that because your body can't digest it. If you eat foods you can digest, you won't be gassy. I'm not gassy. I've dated multiple men in the yoga world who follow their dosha diet. They weren't gassy. Riddle me that. You should not be gassy. That's one of the biggest, biggest signs that you're eating something that's wrong. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, Stephanie, this, this is by um, request, actually. Okay, you guys. So, this comes by request of our challengers. Stephanie. We are now on day 12, so we're kind of between the third of a way and the halfway point of the challenge. Can we get a collective energy read on what's yeah. going on? I don't know how we want to word this. Do we want to ask how this challenge is affecting people, generally speaking, in the general collective, or how it's going to affect the world? I mean, we could just do it two separate questions. Let's just do two separate questions because I think they're equally as important. So we'll ask first, what is the... Uh, what? It, how is it affecting the people now that are doing the challenge? Doing oh, wow. So I have three cards. I'm going to get one more. Okay. So I like this. So number one, we have the nine of wands. Nine of wands is, it is a challenge, but people are really standing their ground with it. They're like, nope, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue this. I don't like it, but I'm going to continue doing this because this is good for me. 
because it's followed by the strength card. So this is not this is physical strength. This is spiritual and emotional strength. I feel, um, and it's really actually getting people to take action. Um, you know, move around more. I also feel like we read in the group some people their jeans are falling off them in the middle of the store now because they're losing weight. Um, I was just telling you, I'm comfortably, comfortably wearing my skinny jeans today. Um, <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> I don't like jeans. I like leggings or I like dresses. So I'm comfortably wearing my skinny jeans. So I'm one of them that I'm, I, I'm definitely losing weight more on the top area than the bottom, but it's be, that's because my chakras are more clogged up in the, the lower region. So I hold all my stuff. We also have a hierophant card. So this is really bringing people into um, their spirituality as well. So we have, we have an energy here of, physical strength, losing weight, coming down into your spirituality, your own individual spirit, like the true spirituality. Um, but I also am getting like emotional clarity as well. So right now, yeah, it's not comfortable, but there's a shift happening amongst everybody doing the challenge. So yay. Hey, I knew that was coming. All right. So how is their hard work <coughs> this challenge affecting the world? We just give these a good shuffle. I busted out my gilded tarot for the first time yesterday in a long time. I haven't used it in a while. That's basically all I use now, but then I have to clean them a lot because it's all I use. So. <laughs> oh, this is powerful. And as I pull the cards, I'm getting chill bumps. So it's really resonating with me i'm gonna get one more card here number one we're coming into the vibration of the love frequency that is the highest frequency so this is raising the vibration of the world is what this is saying then we have the four of pentacles that could be holding on to something or letting go of something I actually feel like this is more of a letting go energy rather than holding on to because we're now we're releasing because it was also followed by the eight of wands. So you're releasing things moving forward. Also a rebirthing type of energy with the Empress card uh, coming into your, uh, your divine feminine energy as well, like balancing out the masculine and feminine energies. Um, And then I have the two of wands followed by the knight of swords. So it's like an opportunity, opportunities of getting things done, opportunities of taking action. So I'm feeling more of a, a motivated type of feeling with those two cards. So it, it, but this is the most important card out of all is that is the lover's let's card. Let's pause on that for a second because I've talked about this as well. And Sri Swami Shatitananda speaks about this too. So when we're not aware of the shadow, we're not aware of our wounds and we're trying to ignore and push down those bad feelings, those feelings can't be, they don't just disappear. So they come up as us projecting anger, all this shit onto other people. Now, when we worry, when we start to work through our wounds and heal our shadow side and sit in our own shit and feel it, what also starts to happen is we start to not we don't project on other people anymore, but we also have compassion for other people too. We start to have a more forgiving heart. And so that makes total sense to me. You can't go into a love vibration by ignoring the dark side. As Shanti says from Aquarius Rising Africa, we came here to learn what we are not. <laughs> right? So we have to play in the dark and our own shadow to learn that that's not, that's not we are, what we are. Although the shadow I'm has stared at, I'm being stared at by a fur baby she's like i'm already in the love vibration <laughs> she's 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 giving me the side eye like are you done yet mom can we talk about how robbie really played his hand heavy with abby like i gotta teach my dog child how to play it cool with girls so robbie can i just say robbie is a teenager um he he talks back he is a okay. back talker he's worse than a teenager he pretty much in dog language says f you yeah. And, and and looks at you like, or wrong, wrong, like, like such a personality. I thought, 
I thought my dog talked a lot because she's, you know, the part husky. She likes to howl. But it's more or less, Mom, I got to poop really bad. Can we go outside now? Um, where Ravi just, like, literally will have a full-blown conversation with you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's the funniest dog. I'm just, but Abby, Abby was, like, playing hard to get. She would look at him, and then she'd look away and walk the other way. I'm like, that's my girl, playing the hard to get day, as a female. The first thing <laughs> they explored each other's private. So I told Ravi... You can't do that unless you bring your flowers. <laughs> um, but then the second date, Ravi tried to show how alpha he was to Abby. He wanted to show Abby that it was his den. He was the alpha. So And Abby's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> he was like, show me. Because Abby doesn't give a shit. She's like, whatever. I don't care. But she's very just blasé about everything, except when she wants to eat and when she wants to poop. She makes that very well known. <laughs> he is the big, it was so funny when we were out walking, though, they were, like, trying to poop together. I was like, humans don't do this on dates. Only dogs do where they poop. Thank, and thank God. I mean, I'm just happy part of our social interaction has nothing to do with smelling each other's ass. I know. <laughs> well, that comes later on in the relationship. <laughs> But I'm just saying, I mean, not everybody washes their ass. So, I mean, listen, <laughs> listen, for any man I've ever dated or will date or whatever, I don't do that. The door is always closed to the bathroom. That is off limits. You are, you keep the door closed too. Like that is just not, there are just some boundaries in relationships. Yeah. I'll go to the bathroom yeah, in front of Stephanie before I go to the bathroom in front of a man. <laughs> like not going to happen. <laughs> off limits. Nope. 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 So I don't consent. <laughs> so um, I don't consent either. I'm the same exact way. I remember before I got um, married, uh, he, he, David was like, we can't get married until you're comfortable with that. And I said, I guess we're never getting married then. So <laughs> he was joking. He was joking. I wasn't though. I'm like, okay. Well, not doing that. If, no, if I'm you, sorry. <laughs> if I'm if your was, partner. Was, if I'm your, your wife, joke. if I'm your wife, then I'm going to be your sexy little wife. Like, that's not happening. Yeah. That's a bad, no, even that's, that's an alone time thing. <laughs> even if I'm pushing your child out of my body, if I am pushing your child out of my body, you're going to stand behind me. You're not. Oh, yeah. Me. Yeah. You're standing behind yep, me. Yep. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. 100%. <laughs> so yeah that's that anyway anyway guys but speaking of bathroom time is a big detoxing so if you guys are going to the bathroom more yay um, <laughs> we love a good a part of it you know we get to detox and flush it all out let's ask let's let's be a little scandalous let's ask stephanie what do the black cats think about our, sh our uh, shadow work challenge is that okay for me to ask Generally speaking, just generally, not a specific person, just the collective of the black. What do the black hats think of us? Hey, channeling source creator, then. Yeah. What do the bad guys think about this, of us doing this collectively? The 500 people in the world who are doing this right now. Over 500. Man. Oh, man, this is hilarious. Are they panicked? Are they freaking out? I know they're panicked and freaking out because look how shadow banned I am. Oh, my God. I like... Y'all, y'all, as you would say, y'all. I'm in Georgia, so I have rights to say y'all now, y'all, just temporarily until I'm down here permanently. Uh, hold on, let me get one more card. Okay, this they're pathetic, seriously, just so pathetic. Literally, <laughs> they like are like, oh, fuck. this is like a oh, fuck card. It's like. They don't know what to do with this card. Um, and so they're frantically trying to figure out, well, what can we do to stop this almost, you know? So um, King of Wands in reverse. I've never had King of Wands in reverse before. That so, sounds like black magic to me. Because it's not, King of, King of Wands can be very intuitive. But it, it, it's also a very impulsive card. So I almost feel like there's this, I feel like it's describing a 
frantic need to a frantic need to it's next to the six of swords a now we have the ten of wands a frantic need to push burdens in front so shadow banning be, being okay. something Try to oh they want to they, they want pe they want people to quit they want people to quit and walk away from it yeah that ain't gonna happen no. we're too blessed i bless, the, I bless the challenge before we started and yeah you did bless the challenge that's the first time we've said that on the camera i did a whole 60 minute blessing of it so mm. Y'all, let's ask the cards. Are the bad guys include human and non-human, like all the whole the whole group of them, including Lucifer? Are they terrified of the people in this challenge right now? Are they crapping their pants, not from detoxing, but from literal fear of the people in this challenge? Are they scared of us? Excuse me, I just hiccuped. Well, <laughs> I have the lovers in reverse. <laughs> so they're like furious okay because that's the opposite of love that's furious um and that's also uh next to the judgment card that's a very very negative polarity kind of energy that's a service to self energy with the uh, lovers in reverse next to the judgment card so yeah they they're like they're freaking hateful this is a hateful energy um and i they're <sighs> They want it to end. They're terrified because they want it to end. And um, they think this is just going to be temporary. They think this is just a temporary painful situation. I got news for them. Well, I ain't giving up. That's for sure. So the online, the 90% of the truthers who are infiltrators and who are bad, generally speaking, the 90%, not one person in particular, just a general collective. How do the online truthers who are bad feel about this shadow work challenge that we're doing because i know i i can feel it i know that the people that are bad are plotting and, and planning and i i feel it and i i i think they're pissed i just want everybody watching right now to do this challenge do you realize how badass you are do you realize like how much how much the bad guys are afraid of you because that's how powerful you are. I just want you guys to like realize that. So this is how does the online cabal, the 90% of the truthers that are infiltrators that are working for the bad guys that are getting paid by the three letter agencies and, and pretending to be truthers to derail us. How did they feel about the 30 work, the 30 day um, shadow work challenge? And then we'll move back to the good guys again. Well, I think they're hoping and praying it's not going to go forward. Like they want things to end. Like they, they don't want this to continue. So the wheel of fortune card with the fool card. So it's telling me that they, they want to get as many people to stay stagnant as, as possible to not move forward. Um, but I do feel like they're, they're putting on an act too with the, the queen of cups, um, so they're acting out, acting out, being healers, acting out, being good people, because this would be acting out, but really it's, it's really troubling them with this. Yeah. That's burden. So I'm, um, yeah. I mean, they're, they've been playing an act for a long, long time. It's just, you know, how, how much, the, the more work you're putting into yourself, the more you can see past that illusion. Yeah. You know, oh, I, if somebody thinks one of us is bad that's on them i'm not going to take offense to it the, the the fact of the matter is you know real people are real and you can see and feel a real person somebody fake you will feel it as well but it's not going to be the same type of feeling it's going to it's going to be a visceral feeling or you feel sick or you if something's not quite right and yeah, yeah. So let's ask now, I, now I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask this from, from the spirit's perspective. What are the good guys 
think about this, the people doing this thing. And this, I, when I talk about this guy's a 30 day challenge, I'm not talking about me or Stephanie. I'm talking about you guys, the 500 of you in the world doing this right now. You're an army doing this right now. So what do the good guys think about what they're doing? Off world or good guys, human, good guys, angels, source creator, the people who are here, or the entities, sentient beings, people, whatever, who are here fighting for the betterment of humanity. What did they think of the 500 people doing this work right now as a general collective reading? All right, guys. So Stephanie just quickly switched out cards because she felt like the cards were being manipulated at that moment. So she's using her Odin deck now, which we love. We love our Odin. Listen, any deity who wants whiskey, I'll hang out with them. <laughs> we love our Odin. So she's in the Odin cards now. So the question again was, what do the, the good guys, either human, off-worlder, angel, whatever, not just one particular person, but the collective group of good guys of white hats working for the betterment of humanity, think of the 500 people globally right now doing this challenge. Because I know they know about it. I know they know. I've been told. I have five, uh, four major arcanas, by the way. Yeah, that's right. You 500 people doing this challenge. The good guys know you're doing this. Just so you know. Yeah, that. they they do. And I can back Bryce up on that. I know that for a fact, too. Um, so if people don't believe Bryce on this, I mean, that's up to you if you believe us or not. But I'm just going to go out on a limb and say she does have actual contacts. And I know not everybody believes that, but that's up to you. That's for you to discern on your own. I'm not going to try to fight anybody else on that. Okay. It is what it is. But yes. Anyways. They, those, there. I, I feel like there's some that are still a little bit asleep in the spiritual world. I'm talking about ones that are not. Um. They, I, I think that this, they, they realize there is going to be a spiritual shift in the world. So this is spirituality. This is worldwide energy right here. And this is also a spiritual change. They're very, and, and it's next to the magician card. So this is a spiritual change. Okay. And they, this is a, this is like them showing like appreciation. So they're, they're very, very very proud, appreciative. Um, they like love felt like from they they have a lot of emotion from the heart. This with this page of cups card, like we're so proud of you. Um, and I I think that this is <coughs> they they really understand this is um, releasing a lot of karmic bondage on us as well and and helping the world with the six of pentacles so that's what i'm getting i mean yeah, that's a pretty that's strong reading right me. there um they're so proud of you guys for doing this and i didn't know that by the way i did not know that i didn't even know what their emotions were on it just, I just asked, putting it out there when i was with them i asked um have we not flipped yet flipped yet because of humanity and they said yeah we haven't flipped yet because people haven't considered yeah. there's so, no way there's no people way people are ready if we if we sit around and eat popcorn and watch a movie, nothing's ever going to change. We're just going to let the NWO, if you guys know what I'm saying, walk right in the front door. And the fact that you're actually doing something for yourself to heal yourself is bringing about that spiritual change. You are now. Let's look at it this way, too, Bryce. I mean, a majority of people awakened right now come from the Christian church, which is so completely violent. Yeah. And there's a lot of hate flying around. I mean, let's say we were to flip tomorrow for instance, and then suddenly people are being told the real story of Jesus. People are going to go vigilante, literally. So we need to start taking back ourselves instead of looking at the outward, like getting getting information from outward sources. I mean, that even includes us. Like, if something doesn't feel right that we're saying, you have a right to question it. You have a right to research it. I, I encourage that on my channel to question everything I tell research for yourself. And that is true. So the, the thing, the brainwashing that's so heavy in the church, what would happen is when the, the people who are heavily indoctrinated into the church, when they were told to show the truth that the Bible is not the word of God, that the Bible is copyrighted and owned by the Windsor family, but these other texts are 
legit text. Instead of being pissed at the church, they would probably harm us, the messenger. Yeah. Right? And it would yeah. cause more violence. So, yes, there has to be a, an awakening of, of, and again, that's why I say the more you understand your own truth through your own illusion, you're going to see the truth through all illusions. You're, when you start to learn more to rest on your own gut feeling, you're not going to need the minister or the rabbi. You're not going to need that anymore, the intermediary bit anymore. And so totally, totally, absolutely, 100%, yes. So one last question, Stephanie, unless there's anything you want to read on. What does God or spirit, source, creator, Sophia, whatever you want to call that highest being of light, want the 500 people doing this shadow work challenge to know? love God <laughs> the real God let me get a couple more cards here holy shit oh. sorry I get excited <laughs> well I gotta clarify one card in the beginning here so give me a sec as I almost drop all my cards here. Actually, I have one more question after this. Is it about the hurricane? No, no, no. Actually, I'm just, I'm not even going to ask that question because we already know the answer to it. Um, it's going to be about the next challenge. Ooh, okay. So... The first card, I, I, I sat here and I'm like, what the hell does this mean? So four of cups can be a disappointment, okay? But I clarified it with the ace of cups. What that's telling me is God is saying through these two cards right here, because this, this, this is underneath this one right here, is that the beginning of this is going to feel awful, scary, awful, but... It's a new, passionate beginning. You're going to start developing a passion for healing yourself. Because actually, the Ace of Cups is a very healing card because it's cups. That's like emotions. Um, God is celebrating. The Ten of um, Cups would say, uh, Creator is so proud, so happy. This is um, saying that we're go those 500 people are now starting to align themselves with the, the Christ consciousness vibration more with this particular card. And um, here's where it gets interesting. So God is also saying this is the storm because this seven of cups is literally a storm card. It's a shit show. Okay. This is a new beginning, a new offering. Yep. And then we have the justice card with the wheel of fortune. So, I mean, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure these two cards out. Justice is what it is. The balancing of energies, the balancing your vibration, bringing things to light with the wheel of fortune, changing things up, which is what we need. I don't know how much longer we can continue on this trajectory because I'm going to be quite frank about it. I'm kind of done. <laughs> I'm done too. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. tired of. I want to see the arrest happen that need to happen. I want to see these dark black dark witches go down, uh, including the politicians. I, I, I want it. It's done. It's over. Now, in January, I'm considering doing a 60 day challenge. What does God want to say about that? Should we go forward with a 60 day challenge in January?
And as she's pulling, guys, a second ago I was on my phone and we are now over 200 people in the signal support group. Awesome. This would say this is really going to be healing. And the Knight of Cups. Knight of Cups is a love offering. So it's kind of like you kindly offering this challenge up. Um, I was questioning these next two cards because I got the Five of Cups with the Hanged Man, which is kind of interesting. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Um, you know, my ego kind of wants to kick in and go, well, that ain't right. Um, but the Five of Cups is followed by the Star card. So what that could honestly say is more shit really needs to just come up. There's That's what people I was really, it's gonna people pull really stuck. need the hand, yeah, it's gonna pull up stuff. And this, yeah, and instead of staying the hanged man, we need to really come into more of this creative rebirthing type of energy, loving energy, motherly energy, nurture, mothering yourself, really, mothering the inner child that you are, nurturing the inner child you are, because the page of pentacles right after. So I'm actually getting that the one of the methods you might want to use in that challenge is something to do with a lot of the inner child stuff. Which kind of like the Quan Yin. Well, that is going to come in, I think, next week in this challenge. And what I was going to do if we did a 60 day was I was going to repeat the first 30 days of this challenge for those who didn't do it the first time or need a reboot. And then the, the next 30 days go even deeper. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's, it's just emphasizing uh, the inner child stuff with that. But we also have the chariot card. So it says to go forward with it. And once again, guys, these challenges are free. It's no charge to do these challenges. If you're <laughs> not learning about the 30-day challenge we have going on right now, email me anyway. I'll go ahead and send you the template. It's never too late to start taking care of yourself. One last question from me, Stephanie. Are these 500 warriors in this challenge, is this part of prophecy? We already know it's the storm. It's just part of a prophecy. <laughs> yeah, judgment and the ace of wands need i say more need you guys, i say more you guys you're part of prophecy isn't it that so that's how powerful you are i knew it that's how powerful all y'all watching right now all y'all who are doing this challenge or supporting the challenge or doing your own shadow work it doesn't necessarily have to be my template it could be any other challenge any other shadow work you're currently doing you're part of the prophecy you are in this part if you come from the church, I'm just going to lay it out to you. The seven seals in the book of Revelation are the Kundalini awakening. It's the chakra, the chakra seals releasing. So unblocking yourself. That's the seven seals in the book of Revelation. I just want to like, hug, FYI. I want to hug all 500 people and plus than the ones we don't know about doing this because you guys are literally where we go one, we go all, right? Like you guys are literally doing this by yourselves and going through, I mean, I know, I know, trust me, I know, I know, I know how awful this can be. Like I know you have, there is no horror story. There is no scary movie out there that's scarier than dealing with your own shadow, you know? And you're doing it and it takes bravery and it takes courage. It's the story of Hanuman. It's your courage. That's going up against Ravana to return your soul to God. And the more we work, the more we descend into the underworld. You are descending into your own underworld right now so that you can then ascend up. And that vibration collectively, I mean, collectively on the planet, the bad guys. Well, I mean, had the lovers card. I mean, that's the love frequency. It's the highest vibration. And. That's essentially where, what we want is we need that love vibration because what it does is it, it extends outward and then it starts to affect the people around us. So, you know, versus if you're not working on yourself, you might get mad at your kids a lot easier. You might react to things. You might show a lot of anger and, you know, not be supportive, not be empathic versus working on your shadow self. You're going to start to be, have um, display more patience, more love, more kindness more compassion, more empathy toward others. You have to your sense of humor because uh, humor is the highest level of spirituality. So you'd be yeah. able to look in the face of these demons and laugh at them. 
you know, Absolutely. and I'm just, I'm so, you guys, I'm so proud of you. I know Stephanie isn't proud of you. You have no, I know, and I've said this before, for you guys doing this right now, if you're new to this, one day you're going to have to pay it forward like I'm paying it forward. One day you will be in the position to create this and help the next generation move forward through this. And so don't take any of these lessons for granted or have them in vain because I I know, I absolutely, I've been there. I've been there. I, I was laughing with Stephanie when you're going through shadow work. It's not one time to hell. It's a multiple trip. It's multiple trips. It's return tickets all yeah. the time. And to face that destruction of your fault sense of self can be one of the scariest, most gut-wrenching things that you will ever go through. It's facing oh, your yeah. mortality. But once you get to the other side of it, you feel such liberation. You see the world differently. You see other people differently. And so I am so, I, I know, as I said yesterday, if you're thinking of running, why don't you stay? If you've always ran when things got hard, what would happen if you actually stayed? If you yeah. run during the dark night of the soul, you're not going to be there to see the breaking of a new dawn. And we, what, what would that look like for you? You guys are powerhouses. I love our support group. I am so, I'm not able to be in there as much as I would like to be in there because, um, we all take turns in there. We all take turns. Also, so we all put in a we word. Got, we got a couple of admin admins in there that are, don't have channels that are just our friends from, from our, you, you, and they're, they're doing an incredible job of, of helping people get, well, we'll accept you. The reason why it's private guys is because we do have vulnerable conversations in there and we don't want just any Tom, Dick, or Harry to be able to read those conversations. That's where they're private. And so um, just if you ask to come in, we'll let you in. If there's ever any trolling, which there hasn't been any trolling, um, but if there is, ever is, we will block that person, right? So so you can be, yeah. you can be and we're doing it on Signal because, instead of Telegram because Signal is a white hat app. It's a more secure Telegram always gets. I, I hate Telegram. I'm actually about to delete my Telegram because it's yeah. just full of trolls. Um, can I say one thing, Bryce, before yeah. we end? Yeah. So I texted you uh, last night. I was um, recording my tarot course, my recorded tarot course. And I've decided one or two people will also win a free tarot course and possibly a pendulum course to divination, course. just in, in general, I'll, I'll come up with the game plan. But I think I'll even add more to it with the 60 day challenge. You know what's amazing? I so many people are donating more and more and more and more prizes, and that shows me how open people's hearts are. You know, I know people. I'm do just so proud. Like, like I'm just so ecstatic that people are actually like doing this and and just like working on themselves. So, you know, it's it's just something that I just really, really strongly believe. I just want to do. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> gift that to a few people. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about adding in a spot for the next yoga course as well as a prize too. Um, so uh, that's a $500 value. So um, yeah, there's tons of gifts, guys. I'm going to be giving out. I had like at least one. I put one gift card to Marnie Alton's uh, month of her her website, but I'm, not, I'm actually thinking about opening it to like two or three because so many people are having such a, like, I really, you feel, you feel that get, get gift of wanting to keep giving to people because they're giving to themselves. And this is, yeah. and we have, I mean, Catherine, I got the list of all the courses that Catherine Edwards is donating. Guys, she's got like four courses there that she's donating that someone's going to win. Uh, Shanti, Shanti's donated um, one of her alchemy courses to someone. I mean, I have someone that emailed that offered to do some other, to donate some other healing. I mean, it's unbelievable, you guys. I mean, the fact that- Well, the thing to help, is- I've been helped in my journey in the last few weeks and I'd like to pay it forward. It's also another part of it. Cause I've been, I, I mean, I, I'm just so grateful. I personally like have you, I have Shanti, I have Cindy, I have Todd, I have all these people very powerful and humble and, and just that have helped me out. So I know that, you know, part of what I want to do is, is pay it forward. If, if somebody really wants to learn the cards and they can't afford it, or, you know what I mean? Um, the pendulum course, whatever it may be, even my herbal course, I might even do a gift for depends. We'll see. Um, I'd like to, to gift that out. 
Can I tell you too, I have to just shout out to a lot of our, our challengers. I say challengers, you're challenging yourself. You're not challenging each other, but so many people have privately messaged me asking for their name to be removed from the raffle because they have, they have the money to afford these things and they want to make sure it makes me emotional. They want to make sure that people doing this challenge that can't afford. I know I had, I had a message. I've had a few messages asking and I'm like, oh, go to Bryce. Cause she's taking care of all that, but you know, just let her know. And that's amazing because that shows that shows so much in a person where you're like, Nope, I can afford this. Let somebody get this gift that really can't afford it. That really needs it. That's that, 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 this that's that's a lot. This is a lot about that. And I, I've gotten multiple messages from people. Say, and even when some people signed up for the challenge, they said, I, I just want to do the challenge, but I don't want to be in the raffle because I can, I can afford these gifts. And so I want to make sure yeah. that someone who can't is, is, is in the raffle, not me because I can afford it. And I just, that, that shows you, you know, we, we look at the law of one service to self service to others saying for those people that said, I, I got a good job. I've got, I can afford to, to, to do these things. That's that service to others. And that is amazing. And, you know, of course I honor it. I'll, I'll pull your name out if you don't want it, but you know, uh, people have asked if I win, can I gift my my prize to someone else? Of course you can. It's your prize. You can do what you want. If you win and you know someone in your life that's really struggling, that needs that reading or that needs that that Marnie Alton website, or need, of course you can gift it to someone else. They don't even have to be a part of the challenge. If you I've, I've had a couple of people reach out to me and say, my mom just joined the challenge. She needs the reading more than me. Can I gift my mother? Can I gift my sister? Can I gift my father? a reading and uh it's amazing that you know uh family members are even stepping up to the plate and helping out their family members with wanting a shadow work reading and and, and everything like that so and what's interesting is what I, i've had a couple of people get a reading from me that are doing the challenge then they convince their family members or friends to do the challenge and then they convince their to to uh their family member or friend to come to me for a reading and such and it's like it's 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 a ripple effect is what's happening there's a major ripple effect and Dominoes, that's another yeah, yeah it, that, that's another example of how this is affecting those around you so like for instance i've had a lot of people say to me i'm questioning your sanity on on your belief system and 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 all that kind of stuff and the one thing i would say to them you know this is i think probably the biggest person would be um i don't know past friends or um david for instance and, you know, I would say, okay, so let's look at it this way. Let's say I am going mentally insane. How do I act now versus then? Can you tell me the difference? And the one thing I got was, holy crap, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. Well, you used to react with anger or shout or yell or get pissed off or you would easily get offended or easily triggered, but you're very calm now. I'm like, okay, so let's examine this again. So people are going to start to notice these things and go, oh, well, you're really calm. You're not reacting like you used to, the things that used to trigger you and piss you off. You're just more grounded about it. So you're, you're also showing an example of what it is to do shadow work with people around you where they're going, hmm, I want that too. So that action speak louder than words. Exactly. All right, guys, I know Stephanie has a reading coming up and we've been over an hour now. I am so great. Thank you, Stephanie, for for doing your part in this and kicking your own, because you're basically kicking your own ass. We're all just kicking our own asses. So, I've been kicking my own ass, yes. <laughs> so, um, and thank you so much, you guys. We love you all so, 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 so much. Maybe at the 20 day mark or something, we'll do another reading because when we're the two thirds of the way through the challenge and um, you guys are incredible keep going. Just, just keep going. All right, guys, we love you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody. Bye.